that is going to create a more powerful commission to review complaints against uh, the police. We had an incredible victory on Wednesday. Uh, at that time, the Rules Committee voted to send our charter amendment on to the full city council for a vote to place it on the ballot. I first want to start out by acknowledging and thanking President Myrtle Cole for making the motion to place the, uh, the uh, or send the uh, proposed ballot amendment to the, uh, to the full city council. After Wednesday, however, things became a little murky. Um, in fact, it happened right on Wednesday, right after the vote. At the time of the vote uh, by the Rules Committee, the uh, council member Chris Ward made a statement that he did not believe that there was going to be enough time for the city council, for the Rules Committee, to send the proposed amendment to the full city council for a vote. That was extremely concerning. Uh, we did a little research on that and we found out that the uh, Police Officers Association was making the assertion that uh, the city had to have a meet and confer with, with it before they could send our charter amendment to the full city council. A lot of in-depth research has shown that that's not true. The city is not required to have any type of a meeting with the Police Officers Association before putting this charter amendment on the ballot or before even sending it to the City Council. What we see that's going on here is an attempt by the POA to slow down the charter amendment process to such an extent that, um, that it will miss going to the City Council. Now, of course, the Police Officers Association isn't powerful enough to do that by itself. It takes two to tango. So our questions here today are, okay, the POA wants to sabotage this charter amendment that it's against by slowing down the process of this charter amendment getting to the full city council. Our question here today is, what is the city going to do to prevent the POA from sabotaging this process, all right? It is the city that has the ability to make sure that this charter amendment goes from the Rules Committee, which has voted to send it to the full city council, that it go from the, the uh, Rules Committee to the, the city council in a timely manner. And over the past week, since, we, uh, since the vote, uh, the Rules Committee voted to send the Charter Amendment to the full City Council. We have been writing and calling all, all facets of the city, the city attorney, the city council members, so that we can get some idea of what the city is going to do to make sure that the city council is going to be able to, to hear this Charter Amendment. And unfortunately, we have really not had our, our questions answered. So we're here today to get not only our answers, our questions answered, but also to get an assurance that the city is going to do everything within its power to make sure that this charter amendment is heard by the full city council so that the full city council can vote to place this on the November 2018 ballot and so that the people can decide what kind of oversight, what kind of community oversight they want of, uh, of p over police officer complaints. And so we've got some great people here today. And I think the next person who wants to, to get up and who wants to get up here and talk about this is Monica Montgomery. Thank you, Andrea, for all of your um, hard work, um, the Earl B. Gillian Bar Association and also Women Occupy San Diego. Um, Generation Justice is here. We have many activists, uh, community leaders here standing with us today to demand transparency from our city, uh, to demand action from our city, to listen to the community's voice and to let the people vote. And so I'm here to just point out a couple things. One is right now we do have a community review board on police practices. We are asking that the authority 
uh, of that board be expanded by way of making it an independent commission. That's what this charter is about. So that the people that are, uh, the civilians, the people, the everyday people that are reviewing uh, complaints that have been lodged by the public, um, that those people will have the authority to really do a good investigation. And so that is what we're asking for. Really, any entity, any person has to be held accountable. That goes across all spectrums, and that's all we're asking for. I, let me just say this, and I say this um, most times when we're talking about police reform, criminal justice reform. We stand here not um, as antagonists to the police and to the police department. We need to make sure we push back on that narrative every time we hear it because it is immature. And it's something that has been pushed by our current city leaders that is not true. It's not true. And so we want to make sure that we are pro-justice, right. not anti-police. We right. want to make sure that, that that is clear. Another thing, um, the current board does not have a member of this community, District 4, on that board. So we have had study after study and uh, story after story of our community members that have come forth and that have um, verified that there is racial profiling in our community. There are, um, you know, oftentimes instances where police are not courteous and sometimes instances of police brutality right here in District 4, yet we don't have a member on the board that is supposed to oversee these types of activities. That is just wrong. And so that is what we're dealing with right now. Um, and I had also just a third point about the process. Women Occupy, in submitting this charter amendment to the San Diego City Clerk, met those deadlines. They, this, this amendment and this proposal was submitted back in February of this year. It has been to the Rules Committee twice. It went to the Rules Committee in April and didn't come back to the Rules Committee until July, which only gives the city less than 30 days to do the things they say they're required to do in order to get it back to full council and then get it to the ballot where the people can vote. Now, it seems th as though that is a tactic to kill the amendment. And so we stand here today saying, letting our city officials know that we understand the process. They may not be used to it, but we understand the process and that we're demanding that whatever requirements even they say they meet, first of all, answer the legal memo that was submitted by Women Occupy. And second of all, even if you uh, opine that, that all these meet and confer requirements um, are necessary, do it. Just do it. Do it before the deadline so that the people can vote. People have put countless hours into this. Um, it is something that city officials have been hearing for decades. The community demanding more police oversight, stronger police oversight, a board or commission with teeth, just do it. That is all we're asking. We have done everything, everything that we've been required to do. So we're asking our city officials to do the same, okay? So uh, our last speaker I'm gonna bring up, Genevieve Jones-Wright, uh, Deputy, uh, Deputy Public Defender, and also com Commissioner uh, on the um, gang commission. And so let's bring her up. So again, Genevieve Jones Wright, I wanna make sure that we all know that I'm speaking in my own personal capacity and these are my views. But what I will say is this, we can't stop at just saying that last Wednesday, the community had a victory. There is no victory if nothing comes of it. So the rules committee voted to take this charter amendment to full council and we need to make sure that that happens. Right. Like Monica said, the community, Women Occupy, Earl B. Gilliam Bar Association, met the timelines. They did everything they needed to do. And I am a board member of the Earl B. Gilliam Bar Association, so I'm gonna say we did what we needed to do. And now our elected officials need to do what they have to do, and that is listen to the community. When I watched the comments from the community, I saw a variety of people who live on in all parts of the city of San Diego, all concerned about the same things that the people here are concerned with. 
that we need more police oversight. We need to have an independent commission right. that will look into officer complaints. The very reason why Women Occupy of San Diego put forth this charter amendment is because of the things that were done to members of Women Occupy San Diego, some of which resulted in settlements, and the CRB never saw those complaints. So it is a fallacy that every single complaint comes to the CRB and is reviewed. That does not happen, even though I heard one of the speakers who is against the Charter Amendment who sits on the CRB say that. That is not true. What will make that true is if we actually have an independent commission that does not have to rely on the police department to categorize and then distribute complaints for the CRB to look into. November of 2016, the voters voted for changes to the CRB. And we all know that two years later, those changes have not all been fully implemented because the city is dragging their feet. So we are standing here and we're saying we're not gonna allow for our elected officials to drag their feet because the community needs to be heard, their voices need to be honored, and our elected officials need to demonstrate their willingness to one, do their job, but two, to listen to community members. And that means since they drag their feet because they've had this language since February of this year and the president of this city council elected to move this very important item all the way to the July agenda, they need to beat the clock and make sure that this is voted on by the full council by August 1st so that that, that vote will go through before the recess. We need this language on the ballot. So we are asking for Ms. Elliott to draft the language and to also respond. Community members want to know. It's not enough to say we're doing things behind the scenes. I can tell you that letters were written, calls were made, and you are representing the city of San Diego. And your constituents want to know how you are going about doing the business of being a city attorney to make sure that this ballot initiative will make it on the ballot. And it's not too much for us to ask President Council Myrtle Cole to say, where are you in the process? Are you helping to facilitate this? Hi, Ms. Elliott. So this is why we are here. We're standing here because the community needs to be heard. It's not enough to say, yes, we hear you. We're going to vote that this goes to full council, and yet it does not. I want to say something else. There was a commission, a board, that was put together by President Council Myrtle Cole, and that is the CAB. And we know for two years they haven't done the work that they were created to do. Right. And so we're not going to take this anymore. Community members are standing up, and this is going to be the last time that we're going to see a two-year delay. We are asking for a ballot measure in November because this cannot wait. This is an important issue. And I don't know if anyone else wants to speak. Tasha Williamson is coming to the mic. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Tasha Williamson with Building Justice. I'm also a supporter of Generation Justice and Women Occupy and all of the leaders that are behind, it, behind me. Um, I want to say this. Elected officials sometimes forget that they were elected. Um, they get this arrogance about them. I'm not quite sure why behind us we have such a show of force of the police department, but in this community it is intimidating. And so I would say to Mara Elliott and Myrtle Cole, which one of you is afraid of us? Um, because to have such a show of force of the police department when you know that the community doesn't have that complete trust um, is a disgrace. Um, I will tell you that I have formally complained against this very SDPD police department, and I have been retaliated against for it. Um, I do not have the same relationship that I had with this police department because of it. I do not believe in their system currently because of the complaints that I have brought forward and the retaliation that has happened to me. I do not believe that this the police department does not need oversight with um, with a subpoena part to it. I believe that they should be listening to we the people because we are the protectors of the democracy. They are the protectors of the law. And unless they forget that we elected them and we can get them removed as well, they should be listening to us. So you had women speaking that believe in civility 
and I'm very different. I believe in civil disobedience. So it would behoove Myrtle Cole and the city council, as well as Mar Elliott and the chief of police to listen to the people that come before them. Because if we come, we're coming to disrupt. Because we realize that slavery and apartheid did not get won and stopped and abolished because people were civil. So they can deal with them or they can deal with us. I do want to make sure that folks who are out there listening can know what they can do. Contact Mara Elliott, email, call, write her a letter. Her email address is M, as in Mara, Elliott, E-L-L-I-O-T-T, -T, at San Diego.gov. She represents the city of San Diego, which means she represents all of us. Let your voice be heard. She needs to know that we care, that we are engaged, and we expect her to do her job to draft the language so that this important amendment will be on our ballots in November, not in 2020, but November of 2018. And we also need to let Myrtle Cole know that we are watching. This is an election year and we don't need posturing. Myrtle Cole said in that last meeting on July 11th that she was approving of that language since she got it. Well, that was in February. Why did you wait until July to actually do something about it, knowing the city council would be in recess come August? So I wanna make sure that we're not dealing with political posturing and that we actually have elected officials who are in seats that they deserve to be in right. and do your job, listen to your constituents, don't play games, don't be cozy with this one side and then posture over here and act like you're with the community on this one issue knowing that you're gonna kill it. This needs to be in front of the full city council at the next meeting, their last meeting, so that we can get this language on the ballot in November of this year. Thank you everyone for coming. That's a, we're done. Thanks.